Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty big kit and as much as I would like it to be the Master Grade Hazel Outlaw, which just came in, which is a very big boy kit. I'm going to, as much as I love Advanced Zeta, I'm going to put that to the side for a moment because I know you guys have been asking me for a long time to take a look at another Armored Core kit and I've had this sitting here for a while. I need to finally get around, get around to building it and sharing it with you guys. Uh, because I know there's a lot of you who have been waiting to see more Armored Core coverage here on the channel. So today we're taking a look at the Armored Core Nine Ball Seraph kit. So this is the kind of the bigger form of this. There's just a regular Nine Ball kit and then this is the Nine Ball Seraph kit. I don't know a lot about Armored Core to be honest. Uh, I played some of the games back in the day but not any time more recently so I don't really know much about the, like what's different about this. I know it just has like more stuff compared to the original just regular 9-ball kit. This is the uh, much more decked out version but it does look very cool. I'm not really super into a lot of the Armored Core kits to be honest. That's why I don't really review them very often. I think I've only ever reviewed one. Uh, but this one is a pretty cool design so I'm looking forward to checking it out. Sorry for the wait guys. Let's go ahead and get right into the 9-ball Seraph. So this is, of course, from Kotobukiya's line of Armored Core kits. I think this is number 13 in the line. You can see this is a 172nd scale full action plastic model kit here. Just on the front, it's looking very cool. On the ends of the box there, you can just see a close-up of that. And then it does sort of transform as well, too, like that. We'll see that in the review. Going on to the side of the box here, you can see just how big this is going to be compared to, I guess, your more standard Armored Core size, which is usually around 160 millimeters, it says. This one is... 210 millimeters, so it's going to be closer in heights to like the Master Grade Unicorn uh, around there. Here's a few of, of the other kits available in the line you can check out there. Let's see the list price for this, 7,800 yen, so around 80 bucks. It's, it seems to make sense, as you guys can see, it's a pretty big box. On the other side of the box here, you can just see a front and back view of how that looks like. It's got a really cool backpack on there, that's one of the things that I definitely like about this design. And there it is, once again, transformed. And there it is. Uh, I think this would be how it looks just completely unpainted, just straight out of the box. It is going to look pretty nice. The color separation on these kits is really good. So, opening it up here, we're going to have a bunch of stuff in here, no doubt. And some really nice detail on these parts. It's going to be looking very cool. If we make our way through all that stuff, we can find our manual here. I just want to check this out first. Some pretty cool, just sort of like stylistic line art there on the front and back of the manual. Open this up, we just got some more images of that, close-up images, detail images, just some just design work there. We got some more Armored Core info over there in Japanese and then our parts list here. It's going to have a good amount of parts as you guys can see the box is pretty full. So it's just going to start up with all of the construction there. Let's just kind of fast forward through the construction and just see at the back there's about transforming the kit and then some cool line, uh, artwork there, not line art, but just a nice illustration of that. That's quite cool looking. And over here, just the color guides. So there's your colors for the kit, the darker red and uh, gray color, gold being the main colors, and some kind of just standard like white, or uh, well, kind of uh, metallic off white to black there. All right, so getting into it, we've got no stickers, decals, or anything like that of any kind. Unfortunately, it would have been cool to at least have some waterside decals of like some markings or something, but we do have some poly caps here in black. We've got two runners of those. And then getting it right into the runners then with all of our red parts first is in this really kind of interesting kind of slightly metallic looking red kind of color. It's quite unique. Runner B, just some more of the same of that. As usual, we've got a lot of nice really fine detail on some of these parts. It looks really nice. Runner C looks like probably all the red parts here for the arms. We've got two of the C runner. And then runner D looks like probably all of the red parts there for the legs. We've got two of this D runner as well. Now getting into our black parts here for runner E, you can see some nice uh, frame parts here mostly kind of on these. Runner F is some more black parts and again this seems like to be mostly probably for the legs here. We've got two of this F runner. And then some more of that here on the G runner as well and once again we've got two of this G runner. Now getting into our gold parts, this is all in a kind of nice looking molded gold. So I think as far as molded gold goes, it always kind of has these kind of swirl marks in there. But most of these pieces are pretty small, so not really all that noticeable. There's runner H. There's some more of that here on runner I as well too. Here we got runner J for a bunch more gold parts. We've got two of this J runner. And some more gold here on runner K. And we've got two of these as well. And a little bit smaller runner, but still in gold. We've got runner L here for some joint parts, it looks like. And finally, the last of our gold parts here on runner M as well. And we've got two of these also. 
Runner N is the bigger runner here for basically the main parts of the backpack. You can see a lot of really nice detail on there. This is in a sort of brownish gray color. Runner O is in a kind of gunmetal color here for some hand parts and some other detail parts. Same thing here for Runner P. It's in a kind of like a brownish, dark gray metallic kind of color. Oh, and we've got two of that P runner, by the way. And Runner Q has a couple more little parts here in red. And lastly, Runner R we have two of is our clear part. I'm guessing probably like for the eyes or like the visor on the head. We've got one in plain clear and one in clear yellow. So there you have it, guys. As you can see, a lot of parts in there. This is going to take a little while to get built up, but I think it's going to be looking pretty cool, very detailed. I think straight out of the box, it's going to be looking very nice. So let's go ahead and get it built up and find out. All right, guys, here it is all built up, and I will admit it does look very cool. You have a lot of color separation on there, lots of details, and honestly, almost a little bit too much color separation for my taste. The mix of gold and black is just kind of a little bit too much. Uh, you know, if I were to go ahead and paint this, I would definitely not have so much separation, especially like in the joints, the frame parts, where you have a lot of mix of gold and black and stuff. I would, I would just kind of prefer a little bit more of just one color more than just kind of, mostly just kind of like a 50-50 mix between the two. Anyway, while it does look really great as it is, uh, it does have some issues just right out of the box. It is gonna have some loose parts that tend to fall apart kind of easily, so you are gonna want some glue. We'll go through all that and the articulation. It is also a little bit lacking in accessories as it basically just has hand options and that's really about it. But so like I said, for options, all you basically got is just hands. You got these closed fists, which are among the parts that I would definitely recommend gluing as those tend to crumble apart very easily when it's moving them around. And you've got a set of open hands here like this, which again are very nicely detailed, but uh, just be careful with those. And your third set of hands here are these flat ones, which I'm guessing are basically just meant to be used for when it's transformed. And this is one of the few armor core kits, I think maybe, possibly maybe one of the the only ones that transforms actually. So that is one uh, interesting feature about this. While it may not come with a lot of accessories or anything, there are other ones available sold separately, other armor core weapons and things that are made. That said, this doesn't have any holding hands for holding onto the weapons actually, but it does transform. Finally, we have a couple of these little connection pieces here, which you can use to attach some said other different armor core weapons onto the back of this. If you go around here on the back, up inside there, those little rectangular vents on the side of the backpack, you just swap those out for those connection pieces and you can connect stuff onto the backpack. But that said, obviously, you've got these big, huge backpack parts here, which would be a little bit in the way of doing so. But also we have another connection point here on... <laughs> but also we have another connection point here on the side of the arm. There's this little panel up on the side here that you can pop off and then you can attach a weapon or something onto there if you want. So you've got that little bit there as well. And I'm going to try to go through some of the articulation here, but uh, hopefully not wanting to kill myself with some parts falling all over, off all over the place. Fingers crossed. All right, so this uh, part here on the head does move a little bit, but that's kind of mostly for the transformation, the little very bug-like antenna there on the top of the head. You do have that clear part in there for like the visor, that clear yellow part. And if you guys remember from the unboxing, you have that part in clear, regular clear and in clear yellow. I went for the clear yellow one, but it's hardly visible anyway, so I think it's not really going to be all that seen in there. The head itself has a little bit up and down movement and you can turn it a little bit within that space there, but it's kind of surrounded by that collar piece. There's not a lot of range of movement there for that. And for the transformation, the head is meant to sink down into the body and there's nothing really locking it from not locking it up. So it's kind of hard to keep the head up when you're moving things around. Because if you pull it up too much, you'll very easily just pull the head off like that. When you try to plug it back on, that's obviously gonna push it back down. So it's a little bit annoying. As far as I can tell, you know, I could be wrong, uh, but I'm not finding any way of like locking that in place uh, once the head is up there. So you just have to be very gentle with it. A lot of really great detail up in some of these sections here, like here in the front of the chest, that looks really nice. Again, even just straight out the box, all the little vents here on the top of the arm. The arm is just connected in there via just a ball joint basically, so that's just gonna move around like that. Obviously, not any problems with rotating that at all. You have a bit of rotation there within the elbow joint, and then of course, you have a bit of rotation there within the elbow joint, and then a double bend there for that, a double joint bend for that. Oh, I see, I lost the hand parts there. I guess those must have fallen off when I wasn't paying attention. So yeah, double joint there does look pretty nice, and again, the... 
So double joint there and the arm does work pretty nice. And I do like the design of the arm. It's a, it's a cool design there for that. You have these big sections going out the back and then some like vents back in there and these details up underneath the arm. So I mean, there's, there's nice detail all around. A seam line here as well too. And that's the one thing you'll notice. There's kind of seam lines here and there around on the kit. I'm not really, really gonna get too much into that because it's just kind of expected on the kit. Like this seam line here on the front of the thigh, here on the front of the crotch. So you just got a number of them around here and there. In the torso section, not really much articulation in terms of like an ab crunch or something. You could do that, but as it is, this lower part here is meant to kind of lock onto the front skirt or onto like the hip section there. If you take this off, then you could change the like the angle of the stomach section there to have more of an ab crunch or more bent back like that, but you would have to disengage this part here, which is meant to be connected to the hips. So, I mean, it just kind of depends on if you would want to do that or not. As it is, I think not necessarily really kind of supposed to have uh, articulation there in the midsection. But that whole thing there in the crotch is just part of the transformation, like this all will transform around like that kind of thing, as we'll see. I'll show you guys the transformation here at the end of the video. Anyway, now that we've lost both hands, let's just go ahead and move down here to the legs. These are not ball and socket joints, but just uh, regular joints that will turn there and then they'll rotate a little bit there at the top. Obviously, you won't have any problems with no skirting armor there. So those can move in and out to the side pretty wide, but you don't have much of an ankle bend here. So you can get the legs really wide, but you won't be able to make the feet flat on the ground, unfortunately. We'll get to the ankles here in just a second, but first the knee, you got a pretty good double joint here in the knee, but again, the more you bend to that, it's gonna be kind of coming out of the joint a little bit there, like that coming disattached, so really not gonna be able to bend that all too much. So anyway, like I was saying down here at the ankles, those are basically just plugged up straight into the leg. There's no ball joint there, so you can't actually uh, move these side to side. Just the front of the foot, you can change the angle of that ever so slightly, just rotating that a little bit side to side. So you can see the feet are wanting to come out now. Oh, and I'm noticing a piece off the side of the foot has fallen off. There's little black pieces that go on the side of the feet that are kind of uh, very lightly attached in there. So I'll have to see where that fell off too. But the toe will bend up and down and the back part as well too. This whole foot will rotate like the whole foot section. Again, that's kind of just for the transformation. Now anyway, there's not really any way to plug this up onto an action base, so you can't really do necessarily flying poses with this as it is anyway. You'd have to modify it in some way, and like normally that would be up underneath the crotch, but you've got this whole kind of uh, big backwards dong, I guess, there, which uh, would be kind of getting in the way. A lot of nice detail on here, so that's why I don't want to be too harsh on this kit with things falling off, because ultimately, like, small little parts falling off, it's just, you can fix it with glue. It's very easy to just make sure that those parts don't come off. It's really not that big of a deal. Ultimately, I think all the amazing detail and everything you have with this kit more than makes up for a couple of loose parts, in my opinion. It's just a matter of being informed about what you're getting in the kit before you get it, so you don't get it and you're surprised, like, oh, why are all these parts falling off? And you end up being disappointed or something. Just letting you guys know what, you're in, what you've got in store. And basically, uh, you know, what you've got here is a model with a ton of really great detail. I love these sections of the backpack here as well, too. Obviously, as you can see, you've got some articulation with these. Those will move around, and it's kind of on like a ratcheted system there for those. You can also change the angle of that to be a little bit more up, like so. So those move around quite nicely and are, once again, as well, also very nicely detailed. Uh, but yeah, overall, for the price of the kit, I mean, it's just something that you got to like. If you like the design, and I would say, especially if you're looking forward to painting the kit, straight out the box, I mean, it does look pretty good. And then, like I said, there's a lot of nice color separation there. But, you know, I think if you took the time and painted this up, I mean, it's going to look amazing when it's all painted, all that detail and everything like that. Fix a couple of these little seam lines here and there. I'll paint everything up, all the little details, all that. It's going to look really, really good but it just is gonna take a little bit more work, you know, than your standard Gundam kit or something, for example. And speaking of Gundam, here's how this is going to compare to your average 100 scale Master Grade Gundam. So as you can see, not only is it very nicely detailed, but it's of a pretty good size as well too. So uh, you are getting quite a lot of kit there in the box. So, yep, there you have it, guys. That is really going to be all there is to say about this. I will show you the transformation here as well, too. Now, again, the transformation is unique among Armor Core kits, so it's got that going for it, but ultimately, I mean, not that interesting looking. I don't know. <laughs> you guys let me know what you think about that. And as far as I can tell, there's nowhere to plug this onto an action base, like I said, either. So you're kind of just on your own for that as well, too, I guess. But this being only the second armor core kit that I've built, again, the reason being mostly just that the, the designs just don't really appeal to me that much. They have a lot of cool aspects to the designs, but I don't know, there's just something about them that I just don't really quite as enjoy as much as other things like obviously Gundam and even frame arms. Uh, mostly I prefer is probably my second most favorite type of mecha kits to build. Yeah, probably frame arms, I guess, but 
those kits do also have their own problems as far as like loose parts and things like that as well too. Uh, so I think that's just, it's just a Kotobukiya thing really to be honest. Kotobukiya kits in general are, you know, very hit and miss as far as, you know, whether you're gonna get uh, ones among the different lines. I mean, like if you get one particular like Frame Arms Girl kit, for example, something, maybe everything's gonna be super solid and you get a different one, even within the same line, a different Frame Arms Girl kit, you might find it has some loose parts or something like that. So, I mean, it just depends on the kits, you know, sometimes they're perfectly fine, everything's super solid, sometimes you have a couple of loose parts, not really that big of a deal, like I said, you just glue it and it's not really a problem. But ultimately, if you like the design and you can stomach the price, then you're definitely going to get a pretty awesome kit that you can enjoy. And especially if you plan to put in a little bit more work to, you know, at least detail it up, adding some panel lining, some top coat, maybe some decals and something on there. Or if you want to go, you know, the full nine yards of painting and everything, I think it's going to look awesome. So let me know, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about Armor Core kits? And if you collect them, build them, uh, or is it something that, you know, maybe you guys are also like me and you don't really build them all that often? If ever but as always guys thank you so much for your support thank you for watching today and as always you can check the link to usa gundam store down in the comment section below we've got all sorts of kotobukiya kits and bandai of course everything else is there as well there too there on the site you can check that out and use my coupon code there zakurilius10 to save 10 percent off everything there on the site so check that out thank you guys again and i'll see y'all later have a good day bye guys